Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back. And today I got a new antenna for receiver antenna for my goggles. So I think everybody out there pretty much knows these antennas suck, right? These are supposed to be the worst kind of antennas. These dipole or linear or whip antennas. And I'm talking about your VTX antenna. And I know they're, they're bad and there's a couple of reasons why they're bad. And I won't go too much into detail until the technical stuff because I'm not really an RF expert, but the bottom line is these are, are subject to the effects of multipathing and reflections. And yet, for some reason, on every single micro that I run, I use a dipole whip. And that, that kind of wasn't my original intention. What I've discovered here, even on the Lizard, which has these elaborate antenna guards to protect the mushroom circular polarizer that comes with it, I. I broke that. I break these things. Every single circular polarized antenna I've run on a micro, including this one from the EX105, which is broken in the middle. I've, I've broken them like on the second or third day. They just, they break. On my goggles, I'm set up with a right-hand circular polarized pagoda and a right-hand circular polarized patch. I never really thought much about it. I mean, I kind of had always intended to use CP antennas this setup has been working okay for me and, and I've kind of been thinking, well, I've got these CP antenna receiver antennas, but I'm not using any circular polarized transmitter antennas. I always wondered if that was really kind of ideal or made sense, but you know, Hey, whatever. So there's a the few reasons why I end up sticking with these whip antennas on my VTX and number one, they, they're, they're cheap and they typically come with like a VTX 03, what you would use on a micro Two, they're light. Three, they're pretty durable. They don't really break. There's no clovers or, you know, fragile things on top that if they get bent out of shape, they, they don't work. If you're in the bushes or near the bushes or tree branches or whatever, you're not really going to get snagged on here. Uh, so for all those reasons, I, I use these on my micros. I mean, it, it just kind of is where I'm at. And I thought about changing out all the antennas on all my micros. And, you know, you can get cheap little CPs for two or three dollars each, but those are the ones that are going to break right away. So you can get a more expensive one like this one, the Furious FPV CP, and these look really good and they have like a epoxy or enamel coating and they look like they're reinforced and strengthened, but they're like 13 bucks each. So, well, what's the point of having, does this actually have any negative effect? The fact that your receiver antennas are CP and you run all linear and, and apparently it might. So Menace RC has a new product. I picked one up. It wasn't that expensive. It was like 10 bucks plus shipping. So let's check, check this out. This is from Menace RC and this is a, a patch antenna, but it's not CP or circular polarized. It is linear. And uh, this seems to make sense to me, right? If I'm running linear uh, transmitter to antennas on all my quads, why not use a linear patch? It, it idea makes sense. Again, I'm not really an RF expert, so we'll see, but what do we get here? We get a cool sticker. I am one with the Menace. And our Menace RC Bandicoot 5.8 gigahertz linear with good SMA connector on the back, so we're good there. Pretty straightforward. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a test out. Um, probably what I'll try to do, hopefully it works, is we'll put Bandicoot on one pair of goggles and I'll probably take off my Pagoda and we'll just use, we'll just compare patch to patch and we'll record some DVR off the two, the two goggles and we'll see uh, if there's any real difference there. And hopefully there will be. Take this guy off. They're pretty cool looking antenna. So we'll see, we'll see if, if this makes any difference on, I don't know. I mean, I had really, really strongly considered changing out all my, you know, buying all new antennas and kind of moving forward, going with a different kind of antenna. And I, it's not like you can put an SMA pigtail on, on, a, on a micro, on a two inch micro. It's, it's too much weight just for the connector. And then adding like a Omway, blue Omway or a Triumph, it's, it's just, it's way too heavy. So the only kind of full performance antenna I've, I found on the market was the Luminaire Axie, I think is how you pronounce that. And 
they've got a iPad. It's like a two gram, and uh, it's cool because unlike a circular, I'll put a picture right here. Unlike a CP, it's just got like a little kind of barrel on the end, so it does have a cover. I guess is, is the bottom line. It's not. It, it, it is a CP, but it's not a clover leaf in there. It's some kind of proprietary technology. Now, I was really really interested in using an antenna, but it's twenty bucks. Yeah, to buy five of those is a hundred dollars or seven of you know, I mean, however many you need. It just seems expensive. So for ten bucks, I figure I'm gonna stick with the. I'll get the Bandicoot instead, and stick with the antennas I've I've got loaded on. So stay tuned. We'll try to have some test footage here. I'll try to I'll try to get some side by side, and hopefully it works out. It's not super scientific. Take the pagoda off of this and put the immersion RC patch on the other set of goggles and try to have them nearby one another and we'll we'll compare the dvr to see which antenna performs better stay tuned guys thanks for stopping by enjoy